Hello my friends. I'm going to share with you some tips and techniques on sanding the Compass Star Kayak. When you're sanding, there's uh, areas that you have to pay particular attention to and that would be where there is glue over the wood. And you want to make sure you remove the wood or the glue from the wood or it's going to leave a ghost image and you'll be disappointed in the finish. If you need to make a filler to uh, fill in some grooves, you want to use epoxy resin with sanding dust. If you use glue with sanding dust, it's not going to give you a good uh, color match. Um, it will block the finish from penetrating into the wood. And if you smear, that mix over the edges of the wood, it's going to give that ghost image. There's two areas in here that I'm concerned with, and it's from the hand plane nicking the wood. And right here you can see like a divot. Here is one also, and this is in white wood. If I have to uh, make a filler, I'll use epoxy with a white sanding dust. Um, to get this sanded away, I have to remove a lot of wood and over a large area, not just uh, where the divot is. If I concentrate on that, it's going to create a, a crater in that area. So when you're sanding an area that has, like this, a divot, you have to sand, concentrate on the area around it until you finally remove that divot. If it's too deep, you'll have to fill. This area here, you can see right in the corners, this is where glue had smeared. There's one here. I can see a bit of an image right in here where glue is smeared. So that has to come down. Right now, I should be using my belt sander, but I have, have a repair to do on that. I, I, a, a belt drive broke. So I'm using a 40 grit on a random orbit sander. And this is going to not leave uh, circular marks because of the random orbit. It will blend those marks in. Now, a trick that you can use when you're doing this to see where that ghost image is. I use a sponge with some water and I'll wet the wood. And it will let you see where you have to concentrate your sanding. And it looks to me like I got it pretty close. Again, these areas right in here, I can see a, a lighter discoloration. And that's from glue that extended out. This also, when you wet the wood, it will raise the grain and it will allow you to sand the surface a little bit better. After I finish with my 40 grit, the quickest way to get a smooth finish is go through the grit sizes. I'll go from the 40 to a uh, 120, then to a 220, and the, from the 220, I'll go and do the glassing. So. As I'm sanding, I'm using uh, the sanding dust is going to be airborne. So I have a respirator. I have two vacuums that I'm running. I'm using this to follow my sander. Um, I was plugging it in, but it seems to work better just following the side of the sander. And then I have my shop vac hooked up. And I'll have this set near the edge where I'm sanding, and I can always just keep pushing the sanding dust to feed into that. So it's a little complicated, but uh, the sanding dust will get airborne, and it'll travel through the entire, from the shop into the house. Okay, right here, I don't know if this is in. I can see light coloration right here in the glue seams, so that has to come down. As it's soaking, I'm seeing better. Right here is a, a lot, this little 
triangle corner. Right here is a nice area that has to come down. And again, I have those two divots that I have to work on. Um, if it's filled properly, it'll just look like some character in the wood. And again, this area around the perimeter, you can see here, uh, these are either worm holes or some of this is nail holes that rusted. So that's the uh, wormy chestnut. It's the old wood. It's over a hundred years old and uh, it's just character. And if you can see right here, this is a real good example of where the glue is leaving its ghost image. And these areas, I haven't really worked this area here down, but uh, these are areas that have to be uh, sanded quite a bit. And if you feel, you can feel a ridge. So to get this area here on the chestnut removed, I got to concentrate my sanding on this strip, which is the cherry. And I can just hook my fingernail onto that. So it's probably only maybe ten thousandths of an inch that has to be removed in that area. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera off to sand. I don't want the sanding dust to stick to my lens. Thanks for watching, my friends. Bye-bye.